In this video, I'm going to be going over the calibration settings and functions for this controller. Um, these calibrations need to be run before you program any track locations or else the track auto move function really won't work well. So this assumes that you've got your controller built, that you've got your turntable built, that you've got your, your base station built, you've tested them all and they all work together. This is just getting the, the controller ready to work with precision movement on your turntable. So whenever you first plug in your, your train layout turntable, it's gonna start auto homing. Just give it a second here. And it should always auto home going counterclockwise. So make sure it always auto homes counterclockwise. And it's gonna move until it finds the, um, the Hall effect sensor or your limit switch. Um, and then it's gonna stop. So the first thing that you need to run is your, your calibration settings. So you go to menu, then you can see the calibration menu. So you go there. And then once in the calibration menu, you need to go to calibrate steps per revolution. And again, you, you navigate this menu by using the A button to move the, the cursor up, the C button to move the cursor down, and the B button to select. So let's select calibrate steps per revolution. And it tells you right now that it is calibrating. As you can see, the turntable is moving counterclockwise. Um, and it's moving counterclockwise at the speed that you set your travel speed to. What's really important is to make sure that you test the speeds that you're using prior to running this step. You don't want your stepper motor to bind or skip steps during this part or else your whole steps uh, calibration menu right now, it would be worthless. It wouldn't work at all. So as I stated before, it's going counterclockwise. And what this does is the controller is counting how many steps it takes for the turntable to do one revolution. Um, and it also calculates your dead band, which I talk about um, in another video. All right, it finished moving most of the way and then it actually steps a little bit very slowly here to count your dead band. So that's what it's doing right now and it's still calibrating and it tells you on the screen. Boom, calibration's done. After calibration is done, it saves your steps per revolution into the EEPROM of the controller, so you don't have to worry about it again, and then it moves your turntable back 10 steps. So it moves it clockwise 10 steps, and that's part of the, the function of this. Um, now your, your turntable is calibrated as far as steps per revolution, as you can see here, your steps per revolution is shown on top. So that has been completed. Um, the next we're gonna do um, some discussions about uh, gear slop. So for this test, I'm going to move the turntable to a just random location and I'm gonna try to get it so it's in line with the camera. And you're really not gonna be able to see this well from your vantage point, but I'll, I'll try to do this. And then I'm gonna take what I do is I take a piece of tape and I line it up directly with the side of the track. So this is exactly where it's supposed to be. Um, and it's important, and, and you can read about this later, that you always program your turntable going counterclockwise. So I went counterclockwise, I, I selected a point, doesn't really matter where, and I'm gonna make this position one. So I'm going to save it, program, position one. So now this is programmed as position one. So. What we're gonna be doing here is adjusting a setting that takes into account some of the gear slop in your turntable. So what I mean by that is, for example, your turntable can move, um, when it changes from moving counterclockwise to clockwise, your stepper motor probably is gonna take about four or five steps before the turntable even moves in the slightest when changing directions because there's just play in the gears in the turntable. Now your controller needs to know how much play there is in order for it to be accurate. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna continue to go counterclockwise and then we're gonna hit position one again. And here 
it lined up exactly where I wanted it to be. And that's because I've actually already calibrated this in the controller, but I'll show you what to do. So if it didn't line up exactly, you go back to your calibrations menu, you calibrate gear slop, that's what we're doing here, and then you move it step by step until it lines up exactly where it was prior uh, when, you, when you positioned it. And then after it's lined up perfectly, you hit save with the enter button, right? I'm not gonna do that because here you can see that my gear slop is negative four. That means it needs to move four additional steps whenever it changes from going counterclockwise to clockwise to take out that gear slop. Now to test this, once you finish, you really should test this a couple times. So we're gonna go back out to the overview menu. Um, I'm gonna go clockwise and then go back to that position. And I'm gonna do that like 10 times. I'm gonna do it a lot of times. And the reason I'm doing that is because right now the position of the turntable is based purely on guessing and math. It doesn't really know exactly where it's at because it's not, it hasn't passed by the home switch in a while. So it, this is just purely its location based on math and using that uh, gear slot number you just put in. And the reason that if you do this about 10 times is if you got that gear slot number wrong, you can see that it's wrong because it's magnifying by 10 um, whenever you look at it. So now you look at the, the track locations and if it's probably hard to see in the camera, but the tape is actually just a, a hair past the edge of the track. That tolerance is good enough for me, but for example, if your track now is way uh, away from this tape line, that means that your gear slot that you programmed wrong and you need to adjust it accordingly. And then after you adjust it and save it, what you need to do is make sure that you make your turntable go past your homing switch again so it can refind it zero. So you make it go past this homing switch, you'll see that, see, my, my auto reverser fired. And then you can do the same test again and it's an iterative process. Um, once you do it once, it saves in your EEPROM so you're done, you don't have to do it again. So that is, again, calibrating your gear slot. The next thing you want to do is very similar to what we just discussed before. Um, it's you want to uh, calibrate your magnet dead band whenever it goes from uh, past the magnet going clockwise. Again, because we program all the tracks going counterclockwise, whenever you move clockwise, you have to take into account the gear slot and the magnetic dead band. So what we have to do now is make the turntable go all the way around to where it's just really close to where your, your homing sensor is and then program a position there. And then we're gonna make the turntable go in automatic mode between the, the save position at the very end of travel and then um, a position at the beginning of travel like worth a low save sp spot number. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it go clockwise past the magnet or the Hall effect sensor. Um, and you'll notice that whenever you do this, that the tracks won't line up exactly perfect. And that's to be expected. And this is a very similar um, calibration method as the gear slot. So here we are going to save this spot where it's at as two. Again, uh, I did all of this um, going clockwise. So this is the two spot and I actually messed up. This is something that I should probably call out. So the two spots saved. So did you see how while I was talking I forgot to save a position over here which is um, counterclockwise of the homing switch. So I can't go clockwise to save it. I got to go back around counterclockwise to save it or else this controller won't work. Um, it's a bit annoying, but that's just how the programming works. Again, if you look at my programming tracks video, you can see that once you get everything programmed and all the calibration set going counterclockwise, then you can just run the turntable in clockwise or counterclockwise mode all the time and it doesn't matter. But for the initial setup, you always have to make sure that the turntable is moving counterclockwise. All right, we're moving it. It's getting close. Okay, right about here, I know that we're really close to where my uh, 
Hall Effect Sensor is because this number, my position, is really close to my steps per revolution. So I'm going to save this as position 3. So that's saved as position 3. And I'm going to put a piece of tape here. And again, this is going to be hard to see from your vantage on the camera. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to position 2. So it's just going to auto move position 2. All right, it perfectly lines up the tape, which is what we expected because again, it's moving in auto mode counterclockwise past the Hall effect sensor. And that's how we program it. So we know it's gonna work. Now we're gonna go to position three, which we just programmed, which is um, gonna make it go clockwise past the magnet. and you can't see from your vantage point, but if it doesn't line up, what you do is you go back to your menu, you go to your calibration menu, and you calibrate your magnet dead band, and then you move it st one step at a time to take into account how much extra the turntable needs to move whenever moving clockwise past the, the magnet or the Hall effect sensor, and then you save it. And this, after you save it, test it a couple times, um, and then make some adjustments as needed. And then again, whenever you save this, this saves an EEPROM, so you're done, you don't have to worry about it again. So that is the calibration menu and the calibration steps that you need to use for your turntable controller.